thinking we're live. Well, welcome back, Facebook fans. Boy, we have a really special treat for you today. Dr. Richard Chester, he's a marine biologist, scientist, PhD, specializing in the impact of humanity on the oceans. Um, he also hold, holds the record for the most watched Clear Passage video. And Richard, you probably have the record for coming the farthest distance to us. You must have come about 12,000 miles to come to us, and we'll hear about this. The video I'm referring to, and that is a real background, by the way, behind him. I hope I didn't steal your thunder by telling that, but um, where he is, uh, is Richard discussing his treatment um, while on a beautiful beach in his video, while he dives underwater and films sea turtles and other amazing sea life. Before we do get to Dr. Cheshire's video and uh, experience with Clear Passage, I want to thank him for joining us and ask you, can you give us a little bit of an information about you and your own website, sir? Well, first of all, Larry, thank you for inviting me and thank all the people who are watching this for coming to watch my testimonial for Clear Passage. Um, and thank you again, Larry, as I do every single day for releasing me from the web of adhesions that made my life totally miserable for years and years and years. Yeah. Okay, so my wife and I, and this is why it's so important to have been treated by you. My wife and I live on a 44 foot long sailboat. You, you can sort of see it there behind me, uh, that little white dot. This is actually where I am right now. Uh, it's in the southern tip of New Caledonia, the Grand Terre in New Caledonia. So it's a 44 foot long sailboat. We've been cruising the South Pacific since 1976, working on different ways to counter the continued decline of the health of our oceans. But we spend time like in very remote, remote island areas like, like this one, with no health facilities anywhere around. We lead an active life, diving and trekking. So staying healthy is a priority. And we're pretty good at looking after our health. We've avoided, I don't know how many tropical diseases over the years. Careful. Yeah, because we're careful. From 1976 to 2005, we were not resident anywhere. And we made multiple ocean passages every year. Well, wow. when I turned 60, 65, we decided to become residents in New Caledonia. You know, that's, that's an island complex about 800 nautical miles east of Australia. We still live aboard our yacht and we cruise and dive locally. And we continue to frequent isolated places like this one. Both my wife and I love taking photographs, documenting the beauty of the coral reefs of the wilderness areas that are protected by marine and land reserves here in New Caledonia. So you can see some of our images on, on a couple of my websites, New Caledonia, New Caledonia Lagoon, all one word, dot com, and images, New Caledonia, all one word, dot com, New Caledonia, New Caledonia Lagoon, dot com, and images, New Caledonia, dot com. We'll try to post those uh, website URLs along with this Facebook video. I think John can do that. Um, as I was saying before this even started, we all want to move where you are because <laughs> just the images are so stunning and the earth and the ocean is so beautiful. It is absolutely breathtaking where you live. So please, if you get a chance and you want to see some absolute stunning nature uh, go to richard's website Bef before we do go much farther into this chat i wanted to remind our facebook fans if you have any questions for richard or for me type them in um and into the chat and we'll answer those as many as we can before we get a chance to leave today um now i know richard you did have a time in your life when things weren't so great in october of 2014 you did fly around the world to be treated by us. Can, can you give us a little glimpse of what, what was going on there? Sure, Larry. Uh, and uh, 
especially all of the people who are watching this, I want you to know I I had constipation problems for many, many years. Yeah, even before the turn of the century. It was not all that severe other than giving me hemorrhoids. It wasn't a big problem. I thought I had candida or maybe some other digestive disorder. So I tried a variety of diets and, and supplements, but you know, nothing really made any difference. In 2007, I began having really severe abdominal pains. So I saw doctors who specialized in all these kinds of things. And he diagnosed the problem as acute diverticulitis. He told me the diverticula become larger and more numerous as you age. And there are often, these are the, the, the diverticula are often the place where the colon cancer begins. Well, that made me feel really great. And so he has this big color poster on, his, on the wall of his office, you know, showing the abdomen and the anatomy of it. He points to this white web tangled around the colon. This is a network of threads called adhesions, he says. Mm -hmm. They can constrict the colon and prevent the passage of feces, causing constipation. And this increases the pressure on the diverticula. And that's why you have a problem with constipation. It's what caused your divertic diverticulitis. Yes, yeah, so I asked him about, yeah, okay, so what do we do? How, how do I fix this? And the doctor said, well, the adhesions are permanent and they're only going to get worse. There's only one way to treat this, surgery to remove the colon. Well, so I, you know, I, like I'm sitting in this, in this office and I'm staring into a future of diapers and bedpans while he fills out the antibiotic prescription and he says he's going to make an appointment with a surgeon to do a preliminary examination as soon as the infection is cured so larry and all you guys watching many years before this i had learned a very special medical lesson always 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 get a second opinion after curing the diverticulitis with an antibiotics I made an appointment with the head of surgery at the hospital here in New Caledonia. So he did a bunch of tests on me and finally came back and says, there's no problem with the, with the colon. You don't have to have surgery to remove the colon. But there is very strong evidence of adhesion restrictions. He told me there wasn't any need for surgery as long as there was no further diverticulitis, but it was unlikely he said, I would ever have normal, unassisted bowel movements. He advised me that I would have to have enemas on a regular basis. Well, okay. I began doing enemas once a week and searched the internet where I found this huge range of different enema treatments. I took a variety of supplements and followed various recommended diets with fiber, including spagulax and other laxatives, not realizing the high fiber diet was a serious mistake. For the next six years, I had a variety of health issues, including you know, fatigue, confusion, sometimes abdominal pain. And during my, you know, doing, frankly, yeah, this is embarrassing, but doing weekly enemas was a real pain in the butt. <laughs> but I still have my colon. In 2013, yeah, it was getting worse. And I began doing enemas every day instead of once a week, alternating between different doctor recommended and alternative supplements, including the antibiotic that cured my diverticulitis, coffee enemas, aloe enemas, probiotic enemas, sodium bicarbonate enemas, neem oil, EDTA, garlic, burdock root, cat's claw, seawater. I don't know, everything. But, you know, the problem just kept getting worse. In August, I remember it well, in 2014, in August, the daily two liter enema began flowing in very slowly, well over almost, almost two minutes. 
Now, that's a long time for two leaders to go in. And by September, only 200 milliliters, 200 milliliters out of the two liter enema would actually go in. And then, oh yeah, it would not go in anymore. So after checking, there was nothing blocking the tube and letting the first 200 milliliters back out without much success. I tried again and again, it just stopped after 200 milliliters. So I tried various additives and I finally got it working again, but not, not very well. You know, I was scared. The blockage in my gut was almost totally complete. Yeah, then on Tuesday, the 7th of October, I found the clearpassage.com website. And Larry, your website said it was possible to get rid of the adhesions constricting my colon using a special worm technique, deep massage. Yeah, but, you know, Clear Passage, it was in Gainesville, Florida. That's on the other side of the planet from New Caledonia. Yeah, so I really couldn't make a two-day flight to Gainesville with a totally blocked intestine. It would be, to say the least, uncomfortable. And to say the worst, it could be deadly if my gut ruptured halfway across the Pacific Ocean. On Thursday, the 9th of October, I made an appointment with my doctor. You know what? He was too busy to see me. But his secretary gave me a prescription for a surgical laxative. You know, that didn't work at all. I was totally blocked. It just made me more uncomfortable. Your website, Larry, Clear Passage website, had a section on diet recommendations. I pulled down your PDF file and I followed its suggestions for a total blockage. I went on an entirely liquid diet. After two days, the enema, the enema finally went in again and I could now get to Florida. I get this. On the 17th of October, where after I was sure I was no longer totally blocked, I called the Clear Passage Clinic. And the lady I talked to was very nice. And she said that they'd had a cancellation in their appointments for the following week. And if I could get there in time, they would see me and treat me. It's going to be, I knew it was going to be really expensive because it was going to cost $6,000 just in travel expenses, plus the cost of your treatment at, at Clear Passage. But if you could remove these adhesions and free up my gut, you'd free my life. It was totally worth it. So my wife, Freddie, and I flew from Numea to Gainesville, Florida, halfway around the planet on the 18th and 19th of October. And I had first, my first treatment at, your, at the Clear Passage Clinic on Monday, the 20th of October, 2014. On Thursday evening, after four days of treatment, I had my first unassisted bowel movement. Yeah. In years, I guess. In years. And Larry, your clear passage team successfully removed the strictures that were tangling my intestine. Yeah. And I've had unassisted bowel movements every day since that wonderful Thursday evening. Thank you. Well, I'm glad we could help. You know, it, it was um, we we kind of physicians wonder where strictures come from. This narrowing that occurs in organs, and now we have pictures on the website of bowel strictures that are like six inches long and look like a coffee straw. And oh, for a patient yeah. that is scheduled for emergency surgery and came to see us before the surgery just to try it and. Afterwards, the, they did another test and another set of films, and they said, this is normal bowel. The surgeon refused to operate. He said, that's normal bowel. There's no reason for me to go there anymore. So we learned the strictures from that and other um, studies that strictures are, are really so often just caused by adhesions. 
um, these these bonds that form internally whenever we heal. Um, so glad that we were able to relieve those long years of suffering. I know how it made it difficult for you to carry on your research or to just even to live a normal life. I mean, these are life threatening. You would have certainly died there in the U.S. I don't know. Well, it's to get treated in New Caledonia for surgery is is would be difficult in the U.S. Bowel obstruction surgery is the second most common surgery, emergency surgery in the U.S. and really? has the highest complication rate. Yeah, it's the second highest in emergency surgery and it has the highest complication rate because when you think about it, when they cut through the bowel, if a drop or two of the contents leaks out as and then the surgeon who's maybe excellent sews you up and then closes you back, now there's a little bit of bacteria that's set loose in a warm, moist, dark environment and it goes, wow, this is a perfect place for me to live and breathe and and grow. And so about one out of five people are readmitted to the hospital in the first 30 days after a bowel surgery. So, um, oh. yeah, not, not only that, but the surgery, this has been shown time and time again, because I've checked it out on the website, many on websites, many times that the, the, the surgery itself causes more adhesions to form. It's so the number one cause of, of bowel obstruction. The yeah. So it's going to happen cause. again. That's right. That's right. So you, you would, so I, I know you're reluctant to, to see, to have, well, I don't know. What did your local doctors say about you coming halfway around the world to see us and, um, and what convinced you that we might be able to help? Well, first of all, the local doctors didn't, didn't know that I was coming all the way around the halfway around the world to see you. Uh -huh. They couldn't care less, you know, uh, uh -huh. but uh, what, what convinced me? Uh, well, Larry, okay, your website is excellent, and it has very, very solid supporting evidence that your treatments really are successful. You know, I just looked it up, and I also found support supporting evidence online, plus, of course, you know, the, the testimonials, which is really important to me anyway, the testimonials of people like myself who were rescued by Clear Passage. Yeah, and most of all, hey, Larry, massage, as you know, is non-destructive. Surgery is not only destructive, I mean, remove my colon, but it actually makes the problem worse by generating more adhesions. Yeah, it's nuts. Of course, it's worth it to come all the way around the world to see you. Hey, also, you know, when I was totally blocked, I mean, in a, that's an emergency situation, right? I was totally blocked and my local physician, he was too busy to see me, you know, and then your website's dietary advice removed the total blockage before I had to go to the emergency ward to have my, to have surgery. I, you know, now that, that in itself was a recommendation that so made me sure that you were going to help. I am so glad. I'm so glad. We try to provide information on the website for people who are in the hospital or who are having recurring obstructions. Because as you said, in, in, or in, inferred, these things occur again and again. If you have surgery and you go to the hospital, you go to the hospital, whether you have a surgery or not, if you have surgery, they've helped temporarily, but that is the number one cause of the next bowel obstruction. Um, if you haven't, then nothing's really changed. And the doctor hands you uh, his card, his or her card in either event and says, you'll probably be back because that's <laughs> the way it is, you know, whether or not you use walk out of that hospital without surgery. So we have advice to help people get out of the hospital without surgery, but then we do encourage you that that's probably temporary and you need to probably come see us if you want to get serious about about uh, decreasing adhesions. Um, in the testimonial you prepared for us, you spoke about your amazing uh, clear passage therapist. I know we handpick them and we, we really work hard. Our, we don't have any kids <laughs> working for us. Our people have been treating for generally 20 years or more before we trained them. 
Uh, we also really look for people who know how to listen because we feel like patients, you are your, you've lived with your body for your entire life. I want you to be an active part of the treatment program. I want you to understand what we're doing and to be able to give us feedback give us information of, oh yeah, you know, I was hit in the stomach when I was in high school and, you know, during a sports event or we had this trauma or that roller skating event or our accident long ago. Um, so what what were your, thinking back, um, what, what were your therapists like, like for you? Uh, you know, from the, First of all, from the moment that Freddie and I walked into the Clear Passage Clinic, I knew I'd made the right decision. Uh -huh. The receptionist who greeted us was, you know, greeted us like we were friends and then introduced us to our first therapist. She was really nice. And as we walked past Belinda's office, your wife looked up and smiled. And that was nice, too. Yeah, that was my first impression. The Clear passage people are nice they care about me and everything was clean and neat it was even nice music i gotta say i i was very jet lagged and my gut ached but i felt better just by being there in your clinic like something was saying to me to my unconscious these people are going to help after we got settled into the treatment room, you came in, Larry, and gave my wife and I a totally clear explanation of what adhesions are, how they form, and exactly how your deep massage treatment was going to remove them. You said it would hurt when an adhesion tore loose. You were honest, knowledgeable, professional, and above all, yeah, Larry, you know what? <laughs> You're a really nice guy. Thank you. In addition to in, <laughs> in addition to your own treatments, I had three ladies breaking my adhesions during the following week. And they were they were amazing. I, I couldn't believe how strong their hands were and how they knew exactly how to move, yeah, a little bit here, a little bit there until the adhesions tore loose. And you were right, you know? It did hurt when they tore loose. But you know what? I was delighted with every single burning release because, hey, it told me it's working. Yeah. I'm so glad we were able to help, you know. I mean, it's true. We, All of us are doing this. I'm 75 now and I can't stop doing it because it's so meaningful to give people back their lives, to feel like it's been like this beautiful flower opening for our entire professional careers. This isn't what I envisioned doing in life, but giving to people and caring deeply about people and being able to change their lives and give them back a real quality life that they're afraid they'll never have again is what drives, I think, every single one of us in the office, from the therapist to the receptionist to the administrator to uh, certainly my wife and I, and it probably all comes down from that. But um, thank you. That is very much how we are, and quite perceptive of you to pick up on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, what about you know, <laughs> yeah, Larry, you know, like I say, it was like being invited into somebody's home with a very friendly family. Wow. Hey, what a difference from a doctor's office and what a difference from a hospital. Hey, right. We really appreciated it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really don't like to go into a medical establishment and hear driver's license and insurance card and you never even see their eyes. We, you'd like to know we are sentient human beings and we should be helping <laughs> other sentient human beings and relating to each other as such, which is of course, exactly what we do. Now we had to. We had uh, early on. We had a, um, a PhD from the National Institutes of Health up in the Bethesda, Maryland area, outside of Washington D.C. And he studied us. And he said, "We originally we were just opening block fallopian. Just we were opening block fallopian tubes, and then we 
moved on to clearing uh, blocked intestines. Um, and we asked him how many hours of treatment we averaged and should we spread, did we need to spread it out? Because we had some patients that we saw two hours a week and we saw some that we saw 20 a lot more often. He said the average was 16 and 0.4 hours. He said there was no statistical difference between those who came in and spread treatment out versus those that had a condensed program. Because so many people like you come from far away, we designed a five day program that's four hours a day. How was that for you? Was that okay or was it too hey, much? Or? No, no, it, it was fine for me. The, yeah. time, I mean, the time passed very quickly. I just uh -huh. lay there on the table while the therapist did all the work. I, I don't think I don't think they could have gone on much longer. And sometimes they had to spell each other because it, it's hard for anyone to focus so closely and exert such careful, very firm pressure hour after hour. And right. by the end of the four hour session, I was ready to go back to the hotel for an Epsom salt bath and a rest. I right. imagine that uh, each one of the therapists had uh, sore hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, after the first three weeks of doing this work and figuring it out, I thought my hands were going to fall off. But then we kind of hit a stride, and, and that's been 35 years ago. So we've, we've been going at this for a while. Along and along with our patients, um, we've discovered and developed an educational program. So we teach you about adhesions and then give you some exercises or some stretches that are very specific to you in your case, so that when you walk out at the end of the week, not only do you really understand what's going on in your body, but you know how to maintain and hopefully grow on what we've given you. Did, did we do that for you way back when? And how oh, yeah. we did. Absolutely. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, wait a minute. Now, Larry, yeah. Uh -huh. You you have the clear passage home program, and uh -huh. I do this. I do this. I have done it every single day since 2014. I, I did it this morning. Wow. And Larry, here's how I see it. Okay, clear passage is a key to unlock and open a door blocking the path to health and happiness. Yeah, of, of course the adhesions are really are a solid door. No amount of enemas, no supplements or diets will ever open that door. Surgery is going to make it worse. But opening the door is just the first step. It, clear passage, and you made this clear to me, actually. Clear mm -hmm. passage clears the passage to health. And I realized from the very start, it was really up to me to make the trek to health. I, I, hey, I wasn't going to come back all the way half around, halfway around the world to see you again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Although I did enjoy the first time and it was really <laughs> worth it, um, I wasn't going to come back. Yeah, you broke the adhesions, but they can and they do form again if you don't keep up the lymph flowing and the intestine free from adhesions. Mm -hmm. Clear Passage is not only a door opener, yeah, to me, it's a school. You taught me how to prevent the formation of adhesions. You did. You told me and taught me how to break loose any remaining adhesions, and there were some, mm -hmm. or new adhesions that form, and they did. You taught me what to eat, what not to eat to keep the intestine healthy. And you gave me a set of tools, little plastic tools, you know, even a baseball to help break any new adhesions and instructions in exactly how to use them. Mm -hmm. You gave me a whole pamphlet with written guide for exercises to prevent adhesion formation by increasing the lymph circulation. And the more research I did online on lymphocytes that create the adhesions, the more I understood how important it was to do those daily exercises, mm -hmm. that they were the way to heal for a long-term solution. A clear passage opens the door and shows the way to a happier, healthier future. And, Anybody that has enough sense to go there and, and free their bowel obstruction. If you walk through the door and don't continue down the path to health, you fail. If you follow the trail energetically, you pass. <laughs> Pun intended. So, yeah, Larry, I'm 100% sure the clear passage massages, diet, 
and exercises guided me to excellent health. And I'd like to say to anyone with a bowel obstruction, with a smart to let clear passage open their door to intestinal health, pay attention to the lessons, use the tools. And every time you break an adhesion yourself, yeah, rejoice, appreciate the brief pain as a win. Do the exercises, follow the diet, clear passage. They're going to open the door, but recovery is going to be up to you. You know, over time, people ask me, I mean, I've had doctors say, well, how can you break adhesions? I mean, I can hardly cut through them with my scalpel or burn them with my laser. They, they can be they can be thick and rope-like. They can be curtains. They can be like a, a ball of rubber bands on somebody's desk. How can you break them or how can you decrease them? What we learned over time, I mean, this all came because my wife had such debilitating pain. It, they don't always cause pain. In her case, they did from adhesions that we had to find something to help her. I've known her since she was two months old. <laughs> I'm 75 now, as I admitted. So what we learned is this, and I think this is really the intent on a lot of these exercises, that adhesions, they are so strong. They're 2,000 pounds a square inch which is 140 kilos per square centimeter. So a couple of square centimeters or one inch of adhesions, you could literally lift a horse. Okay, they're that strong. But at their core, they are tiny strands like strands of a nylon rope that lay down upon each other in a random pattern to, to form wherever there's tissue damage. So you get cut in, in, in a surgery and they form and they form and they lay on top of each other. Each of those strands is that strong. Am I pointing this correctly for my finger? Each of those strands is that strong and is the basis of that strength. But where each strand attaches to the next one and the next one and the next one, there is a molecular chemical bond. And we believe that what we are doing is dissolving that bond so that these start coming apart and for us, it feels like pulling out the run in a three-dimensional sweater in slow motion. It's it's a wonderful feeling. So, so for you, that's really our intent is for you, you to be able to maintain and any new ones that happen to come along. They'll only, once we're done, they should not come back unless you have more inflammation or, infect, or infection or a surgery. Uh, being a scientist yourself, it's really interesting to hear from you what you've learned about lymph and lymphocytes and such like that, um, which I'm actually now going to look into further because I have not looked into that. And I'll talk to my PTs who are frankly much brighter than I. They have much more letters behind their name than I do. But um, um, I just thought I'd kind of segue into, into that. Let's see what else I had to ask you. <sighs> so we talked about the intensity of treatment. So four hours a day over five days, you just felt like you were laying there and they were working their hands off. <laughs> so and we talked a little bit about the home program. Um, so is, is there, I guess this is already a given, is there any emotion that comes up for you or any word that comes up for you that would describe us because we provide health care in a bit different manner than others. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you want a word, a one word to describe clear passage. Yeah. Salvation. Uh -huh. <laughs> I looked up the definition and it, it really, it means the state of being saved or protected from harm in a dire situation. So that's that's the word that I would use to describe clear passage for me and for all the other people with a, with a, a bowel obstruction. It, it's salvation. And for emotion. Yeah, there's one emotion that is there and it's there all the time, Larry. And I mean, I'm serious about this. I think of you every day and that is gratitude. And that means a positive emotion that involves being thankful and appreciative and is associated with several mental and physical health benefits. That's what uh, 
that's the feeling I get. That's, that is very sweet. And you know, I mean, for us, it's we've just learned with every single patient that we've treated because we were just all we knew was when you had a decrease in adhesions, we really didn't realize the ramifications of adhesions. And that really, when I talk to doctors, they tell us they can form anywhere in the body. They form over the heart when you've had a heart condition. I've had oncologists, cancer doctors, tell me they'll form around the tumor. I can't the can't the chemo can't get to the tumor because of the adhesions. Wow. Um, so in sports figures, of course, especially the ones that do um, fast breakaway sports, the wide receivers and the football players, they, they'll get adhesions on the back of their legs and they, they decrease the range of motion for them. Um, well, I, I really want to thank you for being with, with us today. Um, I'm overjoyed that you're still here after so many years, still kicking and still in great humor, living as you are in paradise, even though we are all jealous of that. I um, want to remind everybody that we do have clinics from London to LA, that if you go to our website, which is clearpassage.com, you can just click apply here. It doesn't cost you anything. It just brings up a medical history form. So we read that form. And we review it and we think, you know, this is somebody we can really help. Um, no, this doesn't really sound like us. And we'll tell you that. Um, and we'll try to advise you of where we think you might go then. Um, and or if there are any cautions or concerns that we would have, we will, might ask you to get uh, a little bit more information to us. Um, so that's how that's how you find us in the USA or throughout the world, because the USA has the dialing code of one, and it's 352-336-1433. So that's 352, which spells FLA for Florida on an old phone. 352-336-1433. And, um, and absolutely visit Richard's um, website and go visit him in Caledonia, New Caledonia. Tell him we said, we said, <laughs> um, any last words, Richard? Uh, yeah. Thank you again. Thank you again for my health. And thanks for inviting me to try and convince others suffering from bowel obstructions to come to clear passage, to unlock the barrier to their happiness and health. I am sure it was so incredibly scary for this to occur for you as it is for people who live certainly even in highly populated cities of the world and for you to be in such a remote place. I, I'm, I'm just thrilled that you came and it's, it's certainly a pleasure to know you and it's been a pleasure to know, to know you, Richard. I have no idea how to look on this website and see what questions we have on the chat. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, they're on Facebook. Look at that. Okay. Let me pull that up. I don't, I don't know how to get onto Facebook. Click on that app. Click on the F, my wife says. Darn. I am so sorry for this. Do you know how to do this, Richard? Oh, there's Facebook. Uh, oh, messages. 11 unread messages. Uh, Larry, I can see some of the messages here. Um, okay, can you read them? Uh, yeah. Um, Jolene Gold. MRIs and scans sometimes don't see scar tissue. How are you able to see, feel, or find the scar tissue adhesions? Oh, that's an excellent that's question. You're it's, Shall I go on? Uh, that's an excellent question. Yeah, you're right. There is no test for diagnostic test that allows physicians to see adhesions. If you have 
a test that is not given too much uh, these days, but is very inexpensive and you can ask for it. It's called a small bowel follow through or SBFT. And that is where you drink this liquid that is kind of like a thick shake and they x-ray it as it goes down through your esophagus and stomach and down into your intestine. And they can see where the intestines is narrowing. If there's a narrowing area, we know, oh yeah. Now I can assume that that's because of adhesion. That's a strictured area. Or if there's an area that's kinked. So sometimes it can look like a coffee straw. Sometimes it can look like an hourglass in that area. For us, what we do is, you know, medicine has really good diagnostic skills on medical conditions, diseases, bacteria, hormones, such like that. If you've had all of those tests and they all come back negative and you have had a healing event that uh, you've had any sort of an injury or infection, we'll look at your medical history with you. And that's why we talk with you about those kinds of things that that would have caused adhesions to form. And again, that's just any sort of a healing event, whether it's an, um, Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, some infection like that or a condition like that, or whether it's an actual tr surgery or a trauma, and there is no other explanation for it, then physicians are thinking, well, that's, that's probably adhesion. Certainly when we start palpating, we can tell. Um, and thinking truth, probably everyone has adhesions, including all, all mammals um, and all humans, because they form naturally wherever we heal. And we all get these bumps and bruises in life. It's just if they are causing, if you have an unexplained pain and it is undiagnosed and we can trace it back to one or more events, including, you know, things like horseback riding when it, it's your tailbone is getting pushed constantly with or or even sitting in chronic positions where the front of you gets pulled forward because you've been a great student at school and now you've gone to work over your computer and all of those things. We do look at those. But um, and so I hope that helps answer it. If, if they can't fi figure out what the heck else it is, let's look and see if it might be adhesion. So just complete a medical history form and we'll walk you through it. And, and we're not going to try to talk you into anything. We'll just figure out together. Does this make sense? Jolene, um, I, I, I could tell that, yeah, I, they, they were able to see the, um, the adhesions, I think, on the scans. It depends, I guess, how, how, dense they are uh, when they when the doctor did the the, uh, the scans and on me they they could see that there was scar tissue there uh, actually what they would say was there's evidence of scar tissue there the adhesions but the one thing is that when you're in the, when you go to the clear passage if you're somewhere where you can get to a clear passage clinic they can feel it you know that's the thing Larry Larry uh, I mean the, the, the therapist actually push in and move the intestine. And when they do that, they can feel the adhesions. They can feel where the intestine is, is, is blocked and is not able to move freely. That's how they know where they are. And that's how they actually can trace exactly which one it is and move their fingers until they can push on it just right and then feel it break apart. And you, you know they do when they do it. So the answer is, yeah, you can see evidence of it, but when you get in, if you can see the clear passage clinic uh, treatment and at least let them look at it, they can feel it right away and they can see, yeah, that's your problem. You no, know, adhesions are really best detected by direct visualization, but that requires a surgery. Uh, if sometimes they can see them in your large intestines during a colonoscopy when they're actually taking films. But uh, other than that, most of the diagnostic tests are virtually all of them are exactly what what Dr. Chester said, where there there's evidence of adhesions. And then there's another question from Sharon Ray. Sharon asks, um, do you use hands on only for therapy? 
Yes. <laughs> pretty, I think really pretty much sometimes I'll use an elbow <laughs> if I want to cover <laughs> a little bit more territory. <laughs> But, you know, we're and don't let that scare you because we're always in touch with you. We're saying, first of all, are you taking any painkillers, any narcotics? Because that's going to color a little bit the feedback that I get from you. And other than that, just let me know how I'm doing here. And often we'll even ask you as you start, as we start to get into treatment and in the second, third day, and you start to understand what's going on, we'll say, if you like, go ahead and put your hands on mine or put your hands on my arm and let's just, let's work this together and get it to the point. Is that it? That's, oh yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right, good. So you've become an active part of the treatment team, but that's it. It's no drugs, no surgery, just peace. Any other questions that you can read there, Dr. Chester? No, that's the only ones, the only two I see, but uh, okay. I'm sure there'll be more in the future. And I think, yeah, if you can, uh, people who watch this in the future, go ahead and ask a question on, on Facebook, uh, put it in the comments and, um, you know, the clear passage will come back and, and uh, answer your questions for you. Or better yet, if you have any real questions, if you really think you need to have treatment, hey, contact them. As Larry says, uh, go to clearpassage.com and uh, or give them a call, fill out their forms and they'll answer any question you have. Thank you very much, Richard, Dr. Cheshire. It's been great to see you again after all this time. And you tell your beautiful wife that we said hello. And that hello. we, hey, Freddie, <laughs> hey, dear. I hope you're good. good, good. Are we going to see her? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I won't That's wait. okay. I don't need to be seen. Okay. All right. All right. I won't push then. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for this for this interview. Okay. Thank you, Larry. God bless.